Abraham Lincoln, The Great Emancipator, written by Augusta Stevenson, illustrated by Jerry Robinson. We are on chapter 10. A Busy All-Around Boy There were now several fam families in the Pigeon Creek neighborhood. Each family had several children, and the parents had decided that it was time to hire a schoolmaster. All the families together could afford to pay one, so these settlers has, had built a school. It was a log house with one room. At one end of the room, there was a large fireplace, which was filled with blazing logs in the winter. This made that end of the room too warm and left the other end too cold. Abe didn't mind that. He was used to cold at home, and so were the other pupils. The school, the school room wasn't very light either. It had only two small windows, and they were made of greased paper. Abe didn't mind that, and neither did the others. That was what they had at home, if they had windows at all. The pupils sat on benches without backs. They had to sit on these benches for hours and hours. The children's backs grew tired. But Abe didn't mind that. None of the pupils did. They all sat on stools and benches at home. Of course, the Lincoln family had chairs now, but not enough to go around, so Abe always used a stool. At first, Abe was in the class with younger pupils. Some of them were only six years old, and Abe was 11, but he didn't care. He was determined to learn. He studied so hard and learned so fast, he was soon in the class of older children. Every night, he studied his lessons while his brother and sisters and cousin were playing. Mr. Lincoln didn't like to see Abe study at home, but he couldn't say much because Miss Lincoln wouldn't let him. She wouldn't allow the other children to bother Abe either. Abe is studying, she would say, and that settled it. The Lincolns couldn't afford to burn candles every night, so Abe studied by the firelight. He didn't have a pencil, so he used a partly burned stick of wood. He didn't have paper, so he used a wooden shovel. He was determined to learn. Miss Lincoln was proud of Abe. She told the neighbors how hard he studied, and they told their neighbors. Before long, everyone in Pigeon Creek Settlement knew about it, and they all tried to help the boy. They couldn't do much because they were all poor, and few of them could read or write. But if they had books, they loaned them to Abe. Abe was glad to have these books. He would walk miles and miles to borrow a book and miles and miles to return it. He read every book again and again until he knew it almost by heart. Then he would tell the stories to his good, to his good stepmother who listened eagerly to every word. So Abe went on studying, reading, learning, and always back of him stood that splendid stepmother, Sarah Johnson Lincoln. Abe is studying, she would say, and that settled it. Okay, at the end of each row. When spring came, Abe had to stop school. His father needed him to help make a new field. The Lincolns now had a large family. Such a large family meant more bread. More bread meant more wheat. More wheat meant new field. A new field meant cutting down of many giant forest trees. Every tree that fell meant a great heavy log to cut and a great heavy stump to dig up and burn. Such hard work kept them all busy. Mr. Lincoln, John, Dennis, and Abe. At daylight, they were up and at work. They were up at work. At sundown, they went home. Then they ate supper and went to bed, all except Abe. Tired as he was, he studied every night, sometimes till midnight and past midnight. He even took books to the field and read while he was plowing. The ground was so rough that plowing was hard on the horses. It made them tired to pull the heavy plow. They had to rest at the end of each row. While they rested, Abe read. Not one minute was wasted. Sometimes he worked arithmetic problems. He always carried a partially burned stick on his pocket and he rode on fence rails and ends of logs. Mr. Lincoln didn't like this, but what could he say? The horses had to rest, didn't they? Sometimes Abe would, Abe would make a speech, which always delighted John and Dennis. It delighted others too. Farm boys in nearby fields would leave their plows and come running to hear Abe speak. 
He always told funny stories, and the boys would laugh and laugh. Mr. Lincoln didn't like this either. It, it wouldn't do, he said. You are taking the boys away from their work. They work all the harder afterwards, said Abe. They laugh and forget they are tired. But I didn't want you... But I don't want you to make speeches, said Mr. Lincoln. It's time wasted. You can't be a lawyer. Maybe I can someday, said Abe. I'd like to be a lawyer. That's nonsense, Abe. You'll never have a chance to study law. I'll make the chance, said Abe. You can't do it, said Mr. Lincoln. I can't help you. I'm too poor. All you can ever do is farm work. But I want to work with books, said Abe. Books, said his father. Always books. What is all this studying going to do for you? What do you think you are going to be? Why, said Abe, I'm going to be president. Then Abe laughed. John laughed and Dennis laughed and Mr. Lincoln laughed too. It was a good joke. Abe Lincoln president. <laughs> Borrowed books. New settlers moved to the Pigeon Creek settlement. They came in big wagons and built log cabins in the woods. They cleared fields for corn and wheat. They made vegetable gardens close to their cabins. The old settlers went to see their new neighbors and told them about the church and the school. Then, nine times out of ten, they boasted about Abe Lincoln. He reads books, they say. He reads by the light of the fire, and he reads till midnight and past midnight. Till midnight, said the new settlers, till past midnight. Why, we never heard of anything like it. We lent, we lent him our books, the old settlers said. He would walk miles to borrow them. Will he return them, the new settlers asked. Yes, said the old settlers. He always returns them, and he brings them back as good as they were when he borrowed them. Then the new settlers looked through their things. If they found a book, they loaned it to Abe, who always returned it. And the book was always as good as it was when he borrowed it. Once, Abe borrowed The Life of George Washington. He was delighted with this book, and he made up his mind then and there that he would try to be like Washington, always honest and always loyal to his country. He read on and on till midnight and past midnight. Then he had to go to bed, but he took the book to the loft with him. I'll read it in the morning, he said to himself, before the others are up. He put the book in the crack between the two logs, and he went to sleep. That night, there was a snowstorm, and the snow blew into the loft through the wide cracks. Abe woke up. What was this? Snow on his bed? Snow on the floor? And worst of all, snow on the life of George Washington? Abe felt very bad. The pages were not wet, but the book cover was ruined. He knew he should pay for the book, but he had no money. So what did Abe do? Did he pretend he had lost the book? Did he pretend someone had taken it? No, indeed. Abe took that book straight to the owner and explained the ruined cover. Then he offered to work for the man until the book was paid for. Very well, said the man. You may work three days for me husking corn. Abe worked the three days from sunrise till sunset, and then he had a big surprise. The man gave him the book. Abe was delighted. He took the book home and read it again and again. Each time he read it, he began, became more and more determined to be like George, General George Washington, twice President of the United States. Having fun. Abe loved his book, but he wasn't reading every minute when he wasn't working in the field or woods. He liked to tell stories and ask riddles. He liked nothing better than playing good jokes on other people. One year, his mother finished her spring house cleaning early. She was proud of the cabin, for she had whitewashed the ceilings. I suppose that smoke for the fire, from the fireplace will make the ceiling dirty again very soon, she sighed. Anyway, let's all try to keep it clean as long as we can. A few weeks later, one of the neighbors came to the Lincoln cabin early in the morning. His wife was sick, and he wanted Miss Lincoln to go home with him and care for her. He had brought along his little boy, David. I'd be obliged if David could stay here today, the neighbor said. Miss Lincoln left at once with the neighbor, and David stayed with the Lincolns. 
Mr. Lincoln was away, but the children could take care of themselves, and David, too. When Abe came to the cabin for dinner, he found David playing outside the door. There had been some rain, and the yard was muddy. The little boy's feet were muddy, too. Wipe your feet off before you come in, Matilda called to David. Then and there, Abe had an idea. Leave the mud on your feet, David, he said, and let me carry you into the cabin. Abe picked up the little boy and took him inside. I had thought of a good joke to play on mother, he said. Then, while the other, other children watched and laughed, Abe held David upside down and let him walk on the ceiling. The muddy footprints looked very funny. Late that evening, the neighbor brought Miss Lincoln home. His wife was feeling much better, and she wanted David to come home with her. After the neighbor and David left, Abe began to read. Nobody said a word about the tracks on the ceiling, but everyone was waiting for Miss Lincoln to notice them. At first, she was too busy finding out how the girls had managed without her when at last she saw the tracks. She gasped. Oh, the ceiling, she wailed. What happened to the clean ceiling? She looked at Abe. He was hiding behind his book, and he couldn't keep from laughing. Then the other children laughed, and finally, Miss Lincoln laughed too. Abe did no more reading that evening. He was busy washing mud off the ceiling. He didn't care. After all, he didn't have a chance to play such a good joke very often. Sometimes Abe had fun with the other boys who lived on Pigeon Creek. He played games with them. He ran races. He jumped. He lifted weights and wrestled. These boys were all farm boys. They worked in the fields and woods, and they were very strong. But Abe Lincoln was the strongest of them all. He could run faster than any of them. That is because my legs are so long, he said. He could jump higher than any of them. That is because my neck is so long, he said. He could move bigger logs than any of them. That is because my arms are so long, he said. He could throw any of them when they wrestled. That is because my hands are so big, he said. Abe always gave reasons like those. He never bragged about himself. The boys liked him for that. They liked him too because he never cheated and because he was fair to each side. They saw that they could always trust Abe so they made him their leader. Now, these boys didn't study very hard when they were in school, and they didn't read books between time or any time. What good will books do us, they say. We'll have to work in the fields all our lives. When they talked this way, Abe didn't argue with them. Instead, he usually told them a story. The other boys couldn't understand why Abe liked to read, but they could understand his stories. They never guessed that Abe found many of his stories in books. The end of chapter 10.